My internet is really bad. I'm not even sure. Yeah, there it is. Give me just a second. I'll upgrade the video. Let's see here. I have to send myself a link to get in StreamYard. Do you remember when we were under a thousand subs? Hmm. Almost there. Hey, Chris James. Good morning, sir. How are you today? Almost there. What are you up to today, Chris? Hey, little Arkansas in the house. <laughs> See if that helps. Yeah. Change. Go to this one. Remove this one. And there we go. Can y'all hear me okay? Let's see. I'm kind of just setting up live here. Um, sound good? Can y'all hear me? got any sound I think we do though all right sounds great pictures great we're gonna talk gardening I've got to go gather some stuff and I thought we would talk gardening a little bit and uh, see what's going on I set an alarm I did not set an alarm off on you it was back feed through the phone and the computer where are y'all y'all hey Michelle and Rob how are y'all doing? Michelle, you want to talk gardening? I'm ready. Um, some of these other guys are bored in the truck and they'd rather listen to us yap. And if you want to come up on the panel, you're more than welcome to. Uh, I guess I could put the link. It's been so long since I used StreamYard because my internet is so bad. Let's see. Copy. And then uh, I think it's Control V. Nope. There it is. Loof is still hanging. Let's see here. Oh, this is so frustrating. The computer is not wanting me to. My chat button is covered up. So I can't ah, stream yard, isn't it great? How do I move this button out of the way? Thank you. What was that? Oh my god. Oh, it's frustrating me. Let's see. Just I want that to go away. Yep. I'm just going to put this in, so maybe this will go away. I don't want live customer support. I just want that to go, that button that's in the way. Anyway, um, there it is. I got it. Oh, good. So there is the uh, link if you'd like to come up and talk. Hi, hey, Eric Hale. You want to talk gardening? Let's talk some gardening. Um, what are y'all up to? You've seen what I'm up to. Michelle said that uh, she's in Ohio. Michelle, I think, what are you in zone six, five? MB Heritage Farms in the house. Good to see you, sir. I don't know if I've got any mods. Y'all don't do anything crazy on there, so uh, we won't get in trouble. Let's not talk about how awesome the trucker rally going on in Kennedy is and 
Let's not talk about any of that stuff. <laughs> You're putting makeup on it six. Simply Jan Homestead. Jan's busy. I've seen Jan squirt. No way. Homemade chocolate gravy recipe. Lasagna tonight. Oh, y'all are at home. Oh, no, no, no. Um, y'all Are y'all accepting company? Let me go get my stuff or I'll, we'll, we'll get tied up chatting and uh, we'll never end up talking and planning. And I seriously, I need y'all's help to plan out the rest of what's going on. Like, <clears throat> I'll be back. So you know that I'm almanacking this year, and uh, I can tell you right away, the one thing that the almanac has done is kept me busy. There's always something to do. There's always something to prepare for. Uh, right now, we're in the 18th through the 20th. The full moon is tonight. Tonight's the 16th. Hey, Green County Agroforestry. I saw you planting peanuts. I didn't make the live the other night. What For whatever reason, <clears throat> Everybody wants to go live on Wednesday nights. And that's like the night that all my crew rolls in. So from five, anyway, I'm, Wednesday nights is terrible for me. It's usually when we're eating supper, when you guys are going live. So the 21st to the 22nd of February, it says to start seed beds. It's a good day for transplanting. And so I've got a lot of things I'm going to look not to up pot to maybe get out in the garden. And it's, it's weird because... We've got a cold snap coming right after the 21st, 22nd. Uh, let me go grab my iPad so I can look up stuff. Does anybody want to come up on the panel? I did drop the link. And um, anyway, I'll be, let me go get my iPad. It is raining, raining, raining here. Oh, 31 and cloudy. Yeah. I think it's interesting. It's raining for most of us in the growing areas, like from Ohio to Arkansas, Oklahoma. We've got a four-day window after planting before the full moon and just after the full moon, which it says are most barren times. And I think it's fascinating that the water cycle is working for us no matter where we're at within a growing re it, It's just something I'm kind of keeping track of this year as I plant by the almanac. One thing I'm noticing is I'm, I'm really, from where I am, I'm really in almost near perfect timing with the water cycle, the rains and the dry and the rain. It's... Like uh, yesterday, it said uh, for the three days to turn sod. And so I, you know how much fun turning sod is. But I was going to till, opened up the tiller back in the barn, and the tiller didn't want to crank, you know, typical farm stuff. You got a, a equipment. 
It doesn't want to start. You got to pull it out and wrench it. And I didn't want to do all that. So I was like, I'll just turn it over by hand this year. <clears throat> and the sod was perfect to cut. It was like the moisture level in the ground was, it just, I don't know, for whatever reason, the roots had not established deep enough that I was able just to slice the top layer of sod off pretty easy. And then I went ahead and started building some, some, catch ditches and i thought you know if i can just get my catch dishes in i'll catch this rain and that'll start building up in my soils and water my soils plus i'll turn over some organic material the, the worms were already active eric says he loves turning some <laughs> i did too for about the first 30 45 minutes and uh i don't know i guess i eight or ten hours of turning dirt the last couple of days it was not fun but we got some time coming up like the weather i don't know when i was looking at the weather the like seven day forecast and trying to put these planning dates knowing what i need it's this february switch over from above ground to transplant to root crop i think the root crops are going to be fine we get some some really cold weather coming right here in the end of february and it looks like we in Arkansas are going to get a another snow event. But uh, maybe not. Let me pull up the weather real quick. It's just raining, raining, raining. My internet is so slow. But that's okay. seven day forecast so today tonight after this rain we're supposed to be getting down to 27 which will be a humid cold but 27 is going to freeze internal cells it's going to freeze cells and expand but some plants are going to suffer at 27 30 depending on the humidity and it looks like it's going to be a crystal clear night crystal clear and cold can can stunt and burn cold burn plants up until about 36. So that's going to be another deadly night for the plant life outside. And even Saturday potentially could be, but so that's the air temperatures. So the vegetation above ground potentially is going to be burned for the next three days, which is fine because we're not even supposed to be doing anything in the gardens till the 21st. This is, killing weeds everything right now is killing weeds and um setting up for the big plant so the 21st and 22nd are transplant days and then after that we get another long period of cold i just it's going to be too cold to be planting anything outside right now but my broccoli and cabbage my cold crops my brassicas they're going to really love the cooler the ground temperature as long as the ground temps stay above like 45 i'm good but there's so many extended days let's see 35 30 28 28 31 30 29 29 i just i think it's too early i think the ground temperatures are going to be too cool i don't know if contraption is going to hold enough or put enough solar input into the ground to uh, keep those ground temperatures in that 45 to 50 range where the brassicas and coals would really run for the roots. So in addition to that, moving the transplants out, um, getting them in the gardens, I got to figure out where I'm going to put those. I think that the king's bed back over by the garden is where I'm going to grow my brassicas this year. It's, it's really slow garden area to warm up. I've grown tomatoes and peppers there quite a bit and I, I don't need to grow any tomatoes or peppers over there um the beds are going to be pretty rich and what i like about that bed for the cold crops is it's one of my more protected beds and it doesn't get a, it gets a lot of good early spring sunshine but as the leaves come on it shades that garden out and it gets partial sun just like midday to late afternoon so with some shade cloth, I could run my brassicas. I could run those cold crops in that garden area early, take advantage of no leaves on the trees. And then 
as things warm up here and the trees begin to leaf out, actually getting myself some protection from the heat for those. So I think that's where I'm going to plant my brassicas. Uh-oh. Look here. It's not Rob. Oh. Hi. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Go nice. ahead. That's the best I've seen you look in a long time. Listen, this is real life, right? <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of why I, I do this. I just hang out and enjoy people. That's why we do videos. It's just real life, you know, or it, that it is what it is. And, and this is what it is right now. But I still have my loofah hanging outside from last year. Uh-huh. I'm going to be fixing this as, as we talk, okay? That's fine, yeah. Well, go ahead. I'll listen and read. And yeah. Okay. I still have my loofah from hanging outside from last year. Uh-huh. Um, last year, we brought it in, and Rob hung it on lines in the laundry room, and some of it molded at the bottom. So this year, I thought, I'm going to leave it out there. There's over a foot of snow out there. Yeah. He had to plow a whole way for me to get into the garden, but it's still doing okay. It's not molding. It's not rotting, you know, so I'm, I'm experimenting with that. Right on. So with my loofahs, here's what I did. Some of them were moldy because I put them in a, an area that didn't have good ventilation and it was kind of in the dark and they got moldy. And I was like, I've ruined my loofahs. So I was like, I'm going to peel them and just see what they're, what they're on mm -hmm. the inside. And there were some dark spots where the mold had gotten inside. But I yeah. cut those pieces off, and I ended up with a couple of six to eight inch loofahs. Some of them I'm still using. I shouldn't. They've got to be disgustingly nasty, but um, well, they they still work, and they're still like they're really good on cast iron, right? Because they're abrasive enough to get the food off. That's but yes. They won't knock off your your uh, right. cure on your cast iron, and then. I like them for me because I have such sensitive skin with psoriasis. Anyway, mm -hmm. I, it, it's really good for an exfoliant on my skin. And uh, like foot, feet scrub, you put a little dab I of foot it. scrub in that thing, and it's great on yeah. the feet. I, I love it. Did, when you dried your loofah, when you took it off the vine, did you hang it or lay it down? Uh, I think I, I laid it down, yeah. Well... When, when loofah touches a surface, whatever part of the surface it touches, it ruins. Okay. So you actually have to leave it hanging to dry. Okay. Yeah. So well, I did. Um, that's good. So when you cut them, you just leave a, a three to six inch stem piece on it when you cut them off. And then you can like paper clip or clothes pin those to whatever. It. Rob had it figured out. They hung in the laundry room. And then I got that the thing that's going around. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't able to get to them for a few, you know, soon. I, I wanted to get to them sooner. But yeah. I did, I soaked the ones that were black because I had some of that black. I soaked it all night in bleach. Yeah. And then I washed them so they would just kind of whiten up, you know, get that black off there. Right. So that worked. And then I did a melt and pour soap in them, some of them. And see, I think that's a great idea to, to if because, you know, one of the things the girls are into right now is they've got this nylon sock thing that you put soap in and it's right. like, a, I don't know, it's it's really soft. And then you when I got turned upside down. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. Oh. OK. Anyway, right, it's a good, to me, it's a good idea to put loofah, pour soap into loofah. Then you've got like your wash rag and your soap all in one. It's a well, great idea. This year, I wanted to do a cold press soap in them. I want to, I want to try that. I can't see the comments, so. Oh well, my computer crapped out on the comments, but Jason says this. Well, I think I can't. He says that I think loofah slices soaked in a bucket of lavender water. Maybe some hibiscus extract would make a great TP substitute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be that. And this year, I'm planting totally different than I did last year. I'm not going to do as many tomatoes because I don't have enough space to do, to get the amount of tomatoes to can. I, I don't uh -huh. have enough space to do that. So did, you watch, go, what? did you watch 1870s Homestead, her planting no. session? No. Oh my gosh. She she approached the planning of the garden rather than I'm gonna grow this 
where am I going to put it? She started with how much food do I need to can? How many plants am I going to grow in order to can that much food? Well, and that's then she, yeah. I just, it was such a different approach for me. And I'm sure other people have done it. She's not the first one to do it, right. but she's the first one that I heard about it from. And I was just like, ah, that's brilliant. Why haven't I been planting my garden? And so I came well, in and I. That's I asked, why I'm not going to do tomatoes because for me to get the amount I need to can, I can go to the farmer's market and buy a case of them. Right. You know, and do that with them, which two years ago I bought tomatoes. In, in the, I bought Roma tomatoes in the box. And then when I was ready to do them, because I was going to do them after garden season because we're so busy and I've got health issues and stuff. Well, then that's when I got that thing, you know, that thing that's going around. So the tomatoes sat in my freezer for a year. Yeah. And then I was able to, like, a couple months ago, I made sauce out of them. We canned it. Right on. And it was still good. My brother and his wife, they um, they will take their tomatoes and freeze them whole as they pick them. And then when they bring them out of the freezer, they'll just throw them in gallon Ziploc bags. And then as they come out, when they're getting ready to use them, they'll use like a hot water bath to defrost them. And then they skin real easy then and they put them in whatever they're using. That's what uh, I did. Yeah. Let's see if I can do I'll put this up. Last year, I grew sweet corn. Well, Rob tried to plant sweet corn in the woods at his dad's very deer hunts. And I'm like, why? Why are you doing that? Well, he mm -hmm. fed the animals <laughs> for doing that. But I'm not going to. Well, I, I might do one or two sweet corns just to use for decoration. Okay. You know, because so I don't. If you're, I, if, you're, if you're not going to grow corn to eat necessarily, why don't you use like a... Uh, a broom corn or uh, a gym corn or something like that, that is more decorative and you'll get more ears from, and you can use on your table, like at Thanksgiving. You know oh, what I'm saying? You know what? Yeah. I didn't think about that. I'll do that. Thank you. It's just, I'm throwing ideas. I'm just, no, you know, I, that's just... a really good idea. I didn't think about that, you know, and I'm going to plant outside of my garden more this year. Uh -huh. I don't know if you've seen our big squared in area that Rob made. I haven't yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have Rob. Uh, it's all we've got fencing around the whole thing. Now. Are you it's holding a, a Pomeranian in your hand? No, this is my hair. I know. I'm teasing you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it around. Um, I know. For everybody, I this is my fake hair. <laughs> <laughs> Not that way, but you know. Well, MB Heritage is giving me crap. He want. He thinks I need a head wrap. So. I'll be back. You have my shirt. Oh, thank you. I got it at Tractor Supply. I think that's where I got it. I got my hair from the Amazon. <laughs> I don't. Is he gonna? Well, I don't know what he's gonna do. I can't read the comments either. I didn't. I missed. Well, hi. I guess it's just me. Wait. Oh, there's a chat button. Hold on. Oh, that's a, okay. Wait a minute. Oh, hi, Micro Farmer and Tiffany and Jan and Green Country. I see everything now. Black Tropical Homestead. How's that? And there's Tiffany. Okay. Oh, you got a hat. <laughs> you need hair, Mark. Buy some hair. Oh, what am I going to do? I mean, I'm old and I'm good with that. I'm good with how I am. TBH. <laughs> Here, I got a little wig. Oh, I need one of those. Yeah, I, I want, I've always wanted long hair, so I just bought it. Right on. I asked my wife <laughs> for a haircut uh, last night or yesterday. I said, I need a haircut. I'm starting to peel out of my hat and look like Bozo. And she said, <laughs> I like your hair when it does that. I Aww. said, okay. Since she cuts Aww. my hair anyway, she's my barber. Um, she can, uh, she can. Decide when it needs to be cut, however she wants to do it. You know, I do that with Rob, too. I'm his barber, so I just do whatever I want. And his beard. He lets me do his beard, too, and his mustache. And that's like, <laughs> one year I did it, last year once, I did it way too short. I did it on a one. I really liked it, but he didn't. Yeah. 
Uh, my <laughs> wife would have me no mustache and just a beard. I when dad died, when dad died, I after the funeral, we went up to spend three days in Illinois for some therapy. Mom thought we could get together. You know, there's two of us, my brother and I, and she, and there's a lot of damage from the relationship we had with dad growing up. And that yeah. still carries over to mother. And she thought we could take this as an opportunity to not only heal and gain some some traction in our own lives from dad's death, but also improve our relationship long term with each other. And I thought it was a brilliant right. idea. Oh, I'm yeah. not a therapy guy. Hey, I am, you know, I'd, I'd rather do anything than think about going to therapy. But I went for my mother with yeah. an open mind. And it was really a beautiful experience. While we were up there, though, one of the things that I was thinking um, is I lost my train of thought. What were we talking? What did you say that sparked all this from me? You're asking um, me that. Um, therapy, the beard, the beard. I oh, shaved yeah, yeah. the beard. So after okay. therapy, I shaved, I shaved my face completely off. I like, I took it down to the skin and I mm -hmm. haven't done that since 2002. It was when I was in Honduras. I was living in Honduras and came home from a summer because it was Chloe's birthday. And then I went back and uh, the girl at the airport that was cutting my stuff, she said, you should save your face, senor. You'll go see mamacita and you'll shave your face. And I said, OK, shave me. And she did. She, But that's the time, the eight or 10 years before that, I haven't had a beard. Wow. May have wow. shaved it for the last time this time. I've never seen Rob without a mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Beard, yeah, because I've shaved it off before. <laughs> <laughs> he shaves it off in the summer anyway. And I'm going to take you outside so you in the snow. Oh, it, well, it's melting and raining, but yeah. And I'll show you my booth out there. Okay. Nice. Okay, stay there. Lufa, you, after growing it, everybody should grow it, right? It's a great thing to have around. Yeah. Well, you know what? Now they have seeds. At, where did I get some seeds from? The Amazon, I got them the first time, but I was at Menards having seeds. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm not going to go out there, but can you see that? Oh, yeah. I saw no, your little not, square. Uh, I thought y'all did a big impression. I saw y'all build that. Yeah. Yeah. But the woods are still out there hanging. Yeah. This year, I'm going to grow outside the garden. I informed Rob of that. He's, you know, and my loofah is going in, the, in a different spot. You're going to grow it up your tree? No, last year we, well, the, the year that I did Rufa, right there in the snow, I had a line. So I'm going to have him remove those cow panels because I don't, I don't want them yeah. stretched across the garden. And I'm going to grow the Rufa straight down the yard. It gets more sun and I enjoyed it so much more. Nice. Good. You know, and then outside the garden, I, I got no zucchini last year. None. Eric Eric says you must be in the Midwest. Ohio. Yeah. North. I'm. I am probably North. an an hour an hour south of Lake Erie on the PA line. Okay, I know where that is. Yeah. Yeah. So, but next year I want to do my zucchinis outside the garden bed and a few other things. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've noticed this year as well that expansions take time, not mm -hmm. only input labor to build the expansion, but whatever you're taking care of, you have to take away from some of that in order to add this in. Right. Um, but it, it's worst case scenario. And we end up having to eat out of our gardens. We're all in big trouble anyway. Yeah. I mean, none of us are going to be able to grow enough. Well, you know that thing that we're not talking about is coming through the U.S. Again? Again? No, the other oh, thing. The is I'm not scared to talk about it. I, I think it's, I think it's a beautiful move of freedom of people and freedom of expression. And what are we supposed to do? Continue to get kicked in the teeth? I mean, like right. you can't even make enough now. Like my kids are living at home. And, that, and, you know, we were talking about when I was their age, I had two kids, a house payment, two car payments, and Jessica stayed home with the kids. And it was right. tight, but we could do it. They right. got better jobs than I had then, and they can't even find a place to live. 
you know, right. like nothing's affordable and they're making two to three times what I was making. It, it, it's bad. It's yeah, it's terrible now, especially like my parents, what my dad was making mm -hmm. is, I mean, it, it was nothing compared to like now, you know, it was uh -huh. like, he, well, he worked for Packard for Del Delphi. Okay. John Motors, you know, so he would have had a union job and union jobs made sure that their employees <laughs> could raise a family on one income. Right. Yeah. Well, Rob was, was working at Delphi and they did that shutdown. So he Rob had to take a buyout and leave. Yeah, he yeah. was. See, that's the other thing is they're pushing all their age, their older middle management. They're yeah. pushing them out because they can save the most bang for the buck and not lose productivity. Right. And then I don't know. It's it's a mess. We probably should have stayed off of it. <laughs> okay. I got a lot of things to say, and I see people like Lead Farmer and Grow Family Network. I see these big channels making these statements, and they're right. They're not wrong, right? But it's just like, do I really want to waste my time talking about that stuff? I just well, I know when it comes to Ohio, I want to go down and just watch it. Yeah. You know, I have a plan, and my mom wants to come with me. So, me and my 80 year old mom want to go watch this. Here's the thing that we need to be careful of is who's in charge of the convoy? Who's speaking for the convoy? Who's leading the movement here? Right. Because just like they've overtaken everything else, they can put a man in position to lead the convoy and give us some kind of diluted bullcrap deal with the government when really we shouldn't even be asking for a deal from the government. That it, it, right. The fact that we're having to beg for the government to listen to us in the first place is the whole problem. Right. <laughs> right. I know. And I know here's another topic we're not going to talk about, but the mandates. Oh, I have, yeah, not my worn a mask. I have not worn a mask since that. Well, I did a few times out west. Montana, of all places. I went into a, a shop in Montana and they said, sir. We, you've got to wear a mask. I said, I'm not doing it. He said, well, nobody will serve you here. And so, you know, I on the way out, I showed how human I was out the door. But uh, it was just ridiculous. I, well, my I daughter him, Oh, go ahead. I asked him, I said, is this not America? Well, yes. I said, is this not Montana? Montana is like, in my mind, the cowboy country. They're not going to ever succumb. Right. And it was just like, California, Oregon, I get it. You know, they've always sort of been on the progressive side and trying to move the country into a more peaceful, more environmental, more caring. I get it. And it, I, I, and for me not to wear a mask in danger of people around me, I, I, but they didn't make me wear a mask, you know. You know what's happening in those states now? The people in California, the taxes are getting way too high and they're buying homes in Montana and areas around there to leave California. So they're they're coming, they're coming east. All the people that wanted their freedom in California and everything else, they're they're leaving. So get this. Who benefits from the coastal um, if there's chaos out west on the coast? Who benefits from property values being destroyed? Not us. We're no, not going to go us. buy part of downtown Seattle that was destroyed. But you don't think that there's a, a billionaire or not even that. There's an investment group somewhere looking to snatch up oh, cheap absolutely. investment properties. And absolutely. the way that foreign investment is coming was a deal worked out to... Uh, I, you know, whatever. I just know this. There's people that benefited from what happened out West over that. And um, it wasn't me. It wasn't the American people. Um, right. Hey, did you get your free test kit? Uh, not yet. It, um, that, that was made in China? It's probably, I don't know. I'll probably throw, why are they sending me stuff? Well, we signed up to get that because you have to go. There's a website to sign up and they'll send you so many from your home. We got them. My daughter got them. She sent us a picture and she's like, look, we've got test kits that were made in China. <laughs> <laughs> they, they could were. be inoculants for all we know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. All right, Mark, I got to get off here. I'm heading to my daughter's to babysit. Thanks for stopping by. All right. Enjoy. And I'll see you. See yeah. you next time. All right. Let me show you my weather real quick while we're doing it. Oh, okay. Uh -oh, let me see. All right.
Oh my goodness, it's raining. Yeah, there's nothing going on here today. Just yeah. Oh my. The, the ground's catching water today. Yeah, it is. It's supposed to freeze here overnight. We we went from freezing temperatures about four days ago, three days ago to yeah. yesterday it was in the upper fifties. Today it's in the forties or fifties, and tomorrow it's going to be freezing again. So you're getting ready to start doing some indoor sewing or what? Uh, plants, you mean? Well, yeah. Are you you don't do any seed starting indoors? I I I have the past two years. I am not doing that this year for with a lot of things. I might just go buy them, only right. because I really don't have the room to do it. I I I really don't. And I have a cat that wants to eat everything I have living in this house so mine is helping me with my plants he did spill a tray yesterday but he's like he's helpful in the greenhouse he's not eating them no. no my cat eats listen i went out and picked some onions last year and laid them on the counter went outside to get more and i came in the house by the time i came in the, the cat ate an onion a whole onion <laughs> all of it uh, all right i gotta get going to my daughters i'm gonna babysit bye girl Thanks for stopping by. All right. By. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Well, there's Michelle of Michelle and Rob. It's good that she stopped in. Uh, the link should be still around there somewhere if somebody else wants to pop up. You might have to let me know in chat because um, I'm running a computer that crashes about every five or ten minutes. And uh, that's running the system. Hey, Castle Hives. Oh, I bought my hives yesterday. Rather than put hives together, I read in a book, Backyard Gardener says, buy your hive kits assembled. So I did. I bought a set of assembled kits, and I've got four packages coming in March. And I don't know a thing in the world what to expect, except you put them bees in there, and then you put some feed on top and uh, let Mother Nature take the rest. It's good to see you, Castle Hives. How are you doing today, buddy? Uh, this is transplant. The next date, this is also good for roots. It says specifically... Uh, plant carrots, turnips, onions, beets, Irish potatoes, and other root crops in the south. Lettuce and other leafy greens will do well. So uh, if you're looking for a sowing day, this is my next sowing day, the 21st, 22nd. I'm going to take care of any up-potting or transplant work I've got to do. Still too cold to go outside. We looked at that forecast, and uh, we've got too much cold weather. I've got in zone 7, zone 8, I've got too much cold weather after this date to get things in the ground i think but i can start and if we will st I'll, I'll start carrots here and then that second sowing in that seed frame a cold frame we'll go there i may look to expand some of these root sowings a little bit some more beets and things like that outside of the cold frame <clears throat> So, looks like 23rd and 24th are poor days, 25th, 26th, root crops, and then to end the month is barren on the 27th and 28th. So, we've got another window, the uh, 20, what did I say, 25th and 26th, and that'll be roots. That'll be our succession sowing of carrots or our third or fourth sowing of beets. Probably not going to sow many more turnips. I do love turnip greens, but for me, greens are sort of a fall type thing, something you eat in the fall or the winter to get through. Um, but I might do some more greens. I, I plan on sowing like mustard greens. I've got a really good hot mustard green that I like, and uh, I'm going to sow that in that field, just try to use it as a cover crop and open up. So that's the planting dates are the 18th through the 22nd for roots and flowers. 
This is after the full moon. Full moon's tonight, the 16th. If you can't sleep, you're having trouble resting, it's probably because the full moon has been going on. But the 18th to the 22nd are our big planting days, and I'm really looking at the 21st, 22nd for transplant work, root crops, carrots, cold frames, etc. <laughs> March 23rd for us, zone 7, 8. I'm, I'm like right on this border, and then I'm in a microclimate because we're on the creek. I was back in the woods the other day, back by the creek, and it was warm up here in the fields. It was really warm, 60 or 70 degrees. But as I walked back into the woods, the woods was still holding that cold. So right now, the woods will be holding that warmth, and the warmth will be coming through instead of the cold. But um, the, we're just in a special little zone here, zone 7 and 8. Our March... 23rd is our in season date. Anybody got there? Castle says, I can't wait to plant. Eric says he's starting his seeds in the egg incubator so he can control the heat and the humidity. Yeah, humidity is critical. I've learned this year. Um, plant some seeds. What is Chris White saying here? Plant some seeds. In honor of the Pastor Tim, the prepping preacher, R.I.P. Okay, Chris White. Pastor Tim, the prepping preacher. All right. Plant some seeds in honor of Pastor Tim. I got some mail the other day. Remember that video I put out asking for seeds? Well, we got a bunch of really hot stuff, and then I'll have to find it. I've got another package in the mail. A guy, a really good guy, and... um I reached out to him because I liked his channel and I liked what he was putting out. And I reached out to him to see if he'd send me some seeds so I could get him a shout out. And uh, he, hey, he's a lot like me. He got a little smart mouth and he just, he gave me back the business real quick. And uh, I'll, I'll probably, I'll plant some of those seeds when we get ready. Chris White, thank you. Mm -hmm. Micro Farmer says, April the 12th is the last frost date. What, uh, Micro, what zone are y'all in? I was going to put some frost dates up. Usually, what I've noticed is, like, we're in 7, so 7B, I don't know how they go, the, as it goes to 6. The next one will be about 7 days behind this one. will be, like, April 1st, and then uh, 6B will be, like, April the 8th. And then 6A would be like April the 15th, which is probably what you're talking about there. 7A. Okay. But they're, they're about, these are about seven days apart as you move up the zones. And it may be split like three and a half or five days, four days between A and B. But between zones, it's about a week's worth of difference. Uh, Red Silo Home said, uh, no, sir, we've got plenty of hot pepper seeds. Uh, the seeds themselves, which the way I understand it is um, a hot pepper needs a little cap. Say you don't want a clean, clean hot pepper seed. You want a hot pepper seed that's got a little bit of stuff still on it. And um, to help it sprout, it needs that to kind of sprout. And uh, I was just checking them this morning. We got a few sprouts on our hot pepper seeds, but I, I don't eat hot peppers, really. I don't, and my boys thought it would be a 7A on the Great Plains. My boys thought it'd be a good idea to eat hot peppers, and they were like, Dad, let's eat some hot peppers, and um, we'll see. We've got some of the hottest ones, like that Gator Jigsaw is like a hybrid between two nasty hot peppers. We've got the Trinidad Scorpion. I don't know how to grow a pepper to make it hotter. Does that make sense? Do you starve it a little bit to make it hotter? Do you dry it? Yeah, you know, there's things to increase the heat in them, and I certainly don't know. There's 7B, Greensboro, North Carolina. And then uh, Brian says he's got California Reaper seeds. We've got Reapers. We, we bought Reapers and Ghost and... 
there's we way too many way too many and then i was i was doing some research on the pepper geek if you don't know pepper geek he's a great pepperhead channel and so i was over there looking at his stuff and he's like some of these hot pepper plants can get eight to ten feet tall and produce 50 to 70 peppers and i'm like what in the world am i gonna do with that many hot peppers they're just so i'm, I'm looking up drier weather makes them hotter okay eric eric you certainly would know that but uh i don't know we'll see I, it'll be fun I'm not ready for bees though. I know that. I was I was sitting around the other day. Well, I was turning that garden over. I was like, I still haven't even opened up my spot yet from where I'm I've got a place behind the barn that's clear. It's got good access. They can get in and out and I can get lost real easy, I hope. But um it's got a east facing orientation and waters within a mile of, you know, it's we're good if I have to put them there. But I really want to put them further back in the pasture. So that they've got a little bit more wind protection, but uh, I don't know. It may be too dark back there. I don't know that I've got good open sunlight for my bees. <laughs> Here it says he grew 400 peppers on his contest. Oh, <laughs> that's the reason you had those freezer bags full of that hot pepper powder. <laughs> oh shoot! All right, so uh, March. March the 1st is what it's telling me. <laughs> it, March the 1st sounds really early for cucumbers. This is what it says. March the 1st is good. for. I'm going to write the dates and then we'll do the other. So that's the end of this month. So we've got March 1st and 2nd. 3rd and 5th is cultivate. Cultivate, spray, and do general farm work, but no planting. Sixth and seventh. Um, and that may be where I shoot for my beans, my early beans. I may try to sneak some in before the frost, but we'll just have to play it by ear with the weather. Beans, once they get stunted, they, they almost never re re recover. Eight through the tenth, the seeds planted now tend not to grow. The eleventh and twelfth. So the 11th and 12th, that's those days right before the full moon of March. And here's what I've noticed. You get three planting days before the full moon. You get two after the full moon. Three for above ground crops. And uh, on either side of the full moon, you plant flowers. On the root side of things, uh, you're kind of limited to what you can plant root crops wise. But you can do some forage crop and other stuff, leafy greens. But... <clears throat> The seeds pop. Everything takes off growing from the full moon through the first quarter. It just, you'll see your plants just pouring vegetation. If the conditions are right, they're going to grow the majority of their growth from the full moon to the first quarter. And they're going to begin to slow down from the first quarter to the new moon. And they stop. They stop taking up water. They stop growing. I don't know what's going on after the new moon, but after the quarter, they begin to show a little growth again all the way through full moon. But that's what I'm noticing working with the almanac. <clears throat> yeah, peppers do like the sun. Right on. So Micro's got his grow days. He's got 198 grow days there in Connecticut. That coastal climate in Connecticut it really helps you guys a bunch, I believe. So then we got the 6th and 7th. I got that one on. And then the 11th and 12th. And that's probably far enough look ahead. That, that'll get me through. Let's see. Yeah, the last frost is just, there's a transplant day just before that last frost. And uh, that may be when I shoot to try to get my cat, even if I put my cabbages in the ground, I may not even put those cabbages in the ground. They may stay in those pots. Um, but that's, that's through the full moon. So first and second, 
sixth and seventh and eleventh to the twelfth. So here's the problem for me. Once we cross over that twenty third and beyond frost, I start getting ninety degree temperatures. I start getting to eighty five and ninety. Yeah, it doesn't get below freezing anymore, but that's when the heat comes and usually the lettuce bolts and the Nebraska's bolt and I'm growing cucumbers, tomatoes and peppers and stuff. That's the other thing. Uh, with this late frost day, we got hot peppers that started those. I don't want to put those in the ground until my soil temperatures are up in the 50, 55 range. So it could be a while before those even get out. I'm hustling like 40 trays in and out of the greenhouse. I did get a cart. It didn't take me very many days of carrying all those by hand to where I was like, I got to have a cart. And I didn't get the cart I wanted. But I got a cart that will work for now. That, that And the only thing wrong with the cart I've got is it won't handle a double layer. Like, and it's... It's cheaply built. It's the right style. It's just cheaply built. It's got thin metal, and it's it's not built to last like some of the other carts like that are. Unfinished business says I've got two hundred two hundred fifty grow days in Florida. Right on. So. This for me, I guess, is going to be like some collards, lots of flowers, maybe, herbs. I'll make sure I get all my herbs planted in here. Cumin's up. Boom, those seeds that you sent are viable. My cumin's up. My deal's up that you sent. Um, yeah. So what are y'all doing? What is what is your gardening plan? We ain't even taken into account. This is just when to start, right? We haven't taken into account any companion planting and how those things are going out, where these things are going into beds. I know in the yard garden, I kind of decided as I was thinking about that planting session that 1870s homestead had on her channel one of the things that I, I i saw that i thought was pretty brilliant is her staple crop tomatoes potatoes corn peppers that sort of stuff stayed in a main garden area so and it has a rotation most of those play really well together but potatoes and onions do not onions does not like beans um corn and onions i think may get along but how do you plan those companion plants right into your garden bed as well and that's something i'm still kind of refining and putting on hey cindy's place silver fox is in the bill edmund dante says mark you're pretty hard on carts ain't ya Oh, could tell I was a teacher by using the chalkboard. My kids hated it. They were like, can we just get a PowerPoint? Can we just get a day off? That's what they used to beg me for. Can we just take it easy today and do nothing? Uh, no, because if I give you this day, you're never going to get this day back to learn something you could have learned today. Chris White says, uh, well, I'm, let me show. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I love it. I love it. Keep it. Uh, Jason says, onions just really want their own space. They don't really like being crowded uh, by anything, even other onions. That's Green County Agriforce. You're saying that, Jason, over there. Onions are a tough one to figure. And then, you know, like carrots, peas, and tomatoes, green peas, and your your early peas come out about the same time that your tomatoes are going in if you've got that timed right but uh, chris 
Chris White says, strong focus on herbs this year for dehydrating. And see, that's what Jamie and I were talking about at Jewel's Small Gardening. Um, what's he calling his channel now? I can't ever keep up with it. But he's. we were talking, and if you could just sub replace the herbs that you buy, so you're using fresh herbs in your kitchen, that's a huge step in being sufficient. At least you're sufficient in herbs. I'm going to try to grow sufficient potatoes. And one of the things that I realized this year pretty early is that I've got all determinate to potatoes and they're all mid range. There's no earlies. There's all sort of main crop determinants, which means that I'll have no diversity in picking them other than putting them in the ground at different times. I would like to find some earlies and then I would like to find some 115 day main crops, but these tend to be the varieties. They're the red Pontiacs, the Yukon gold, and I guess the Kennebec or what you would call a russet. Those tend to be the ones that are grown here. They may be for good reason. Tiffany Q, uh, Tiffany Q2U says this year, instead of only planting extra food for my neighbors i'm potting plants for the food bank to give to people who want to grow that's incredible great idea tiffany excellent excellent uh -huh. cindy says all good teachers don't give their kids days off yeah how much uh how much rice and beans do you want to eat with no salt no pepper, just bowl beans and bowl rice. You know, at least if you have oregano, sage, stuff like that, you could put that in there and yeah, it, it will be good. Cindy says, I grow my own herbs and dehydrate them. I don't buy store herbs anymore. Yeah, one of the things that attracted me to Cindy's channel early on, I think, is she. She was on an adventure. First of all, she was down in Roswell, New Mexico, exploring these, these amazing places out west that were haunted or anyway. Then she started going into medicinal herbs and like um, teas and things like that. And I was like, oh, this is something I'm interested in. I love this kind of stuff. So uh, that's how Cindy and I met. And she has replaced all her herbs with Self-grown, I guess, Cindy. Pretty cool. She was someplace, a mailbox. There's a mailbox out in the middle of the desert. You can leave mail and it disappears, but nobody ever knows who picks it up or something. Eric Hale says he grows peppers for seasoning. One of the things I hope that I'm going to do this year is do like some fermented pepper sauce and I'm watching the couple of channels um, that are doing that. Some of them I've been following for quite a while. Jason says he would love to go down south and explore in the Pueblo. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. One spring break, the kids and I went up to Mesa Verde Luke informed me that if we, we were going to uh, what's the National World Heritage Site out there the uh, it's in the Four Corners region the Anasazi lived there anyway Chaco Canyon and Chaco you drive down this this paved road way out in the middle of New Mexico desert there's nothing around yet and then you turn off of that road and go 16 miles gravel back even further into the New Mexico desert. And um, there's Chaco Canyon. We did that one year and looked at the petroglyph walls and um, all of the settlements that were aligned with the stars and the big kivas. And I'm still thinking the kivas were like their early greenhouses. It was a place they could conserve moisture and start their corn inside. Uh, but, you know, what? anyway... <clears throat> then we went up to the Pueblos up in Mesa Verde, which is newer stuff than the Anasazi Chaco. This is newer. The Pueblos, the cliff dwellings are newer stuff. But they were eating pine nuts and um, 
things like that. The, the landscape had obviously changed. So Tiffany says, my peppers go a long way. The health benefits are a bonus. Yeah, peppers and capsaicin are really good for you. They've got vitamin C and A and D. They, they're very healthy plants to eat, consume. Plus, they spike your metabolism. So they get your blood flowing. Um, yeah, we've seen a lot of the world, hadn't we, buddy? You know, if, if I take the tour of the United States, I had an RV transport for a year and a half. And I add to that the things that I saw growing up and countries I lived in, you know, I've seen a lot of the planet. People are people wherever you go. There's good people and bad people. People that want to help you and people that want to hurt you. It's just life. What else? Do we need to talk about? What else would you like to talk about? Any questions, comments, ideas, things in your gardens you want to talk about? Not I must suffer through the rain on the. We can just hang out. I'm gonna go grab something to drink, and if you want to hang out, you're welcome to stay. Uh, I'll put this out, and um, if you want to come up, you're welcome to. I'm kind of trapped inside all day. Be right back. Anybody want to come up so they can hold the show while I'm gone? Anybody? Anybody? Good morning, JS Badger. How are you? Badger, where are you at? I'll move so you can see the, the grow dates. So, uh, 25th, 26th is when we'll start planting roots. And then we've got the 1st and 2nd, 6th and 7th, 11th and 12th. That's early March. But we don't get over to frost until the 23rd here. I don't know what your frost date is where you are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's hammering. It, it's coming in like a hurricane. I, I moved yesterday. I didn't leave the plants. And I could have last night. I could have left the plants in contraption but i was like man it's supposed to rain and be nasty tomorrow and i don't want to be trying to move plants in the middle of a, a cold front moving in but uh <laughs> i moved everything inside i've got everything inside now and i'm glad i do emptied the greenhouse even because it's getting down to 30 tonight Yeah, deal. Tiffany Q2 says, any idea how to get deal to grow? Must be some trick. What temperatures? <laughs> Last year, I started some deal, and it took off. And I couldn't do anything to keep it from getting leggy. I put a fan on it. I put lights on it, and it is gone. Tiffany Q2, here's what I'm doing with my deal this year. As soon as it popped, I put it outside and cooled it off and put it in the sun, just trying to beat it back. It's, I think it, it, it likes to cool. It's got to have enough heat to go, but it can handle some cool after it's up. Don't quote me on that. That's what I'm doing this year to try and get deal started inside. There it is. This is what Chris White says with deal keep the deal drier and water from the bottom let me give you two more herbs that i've noticed like you you always always heard some plants like wet feet and some plants like dry feet 
flax loves wet feet. I can leave that flax plant in a tray of water and it just seems to grow. My basil, if I leave that in wet, a wet environment, it'll, it'll, what they, what do they call that? Uh, it'll die, dampen off. Basil doesn't like wet feet. <laughs> yeah. So deal. Deal doesn't like a lot of water. And with some of these, this is another thing I've noticed this year. With some of these soil mixes, they are so well put together. They do such a great job of moisture retention that if you overwater one time, they will hardly ever dry out. It, it takes forever and ever and ever to keep air coming into the roots. And if you'll sit, you know, when my last video, you saw me mashing those pots and turning them. I was trying to ensure that I've got airflow down into that soil mix because the soil mix is so dense when it gets water that it, it clogs up and makes a block. So I try to keep, keep the roots stimulated by, you know, not too rough on them, but I want to stimulate them enough that they grow and I want to open that soil up so the air gets down in the soil. <clears throat> I've got a little stick I use too. I've got a piece of copper wire that's slightly longer than the pot and if the pot starts looking real damp and clogged up, I'll run me a few holes down in that pot before I'm... Maters don't like wet feet. They handle, some things handle water better than others. Like lavender and chamomile. Chamomile really doesn't like wet feet. Lavender doesn't like wet feet at all. Lavender will die on you in a heartbeat when it's little if it's too wet. Yeah, it kind of likes to run on the dry side. Tiffany Q says cilantro the same way. Uh, cilantro likes it cold. Cilant think of cilantro more like arugula. It's an early green. I know we like to use cilantro when we make our salsas, like right? So basic salsa recipes, uh, tomatoes, onions, peppers, cilantro, garlic, and onion, and uh, salt and pepper, maybe some cumin. But you put that in your salsa, and so you think that cilantro is a warm season, but it's really not. Cilantro, once it gets a little warm, it's gone. It bolts really quick. Ooh, turmeric, I have not grown any. I've got ginger. Ginger's pretty easy. I just laid a thing of ginger on top of some soil and waited for it to go. But turmeric, I don't know. Because flax likes so much water, I think I have just the place to plant some flax that will continue to come back. And it's great beef food. I found out from Jason Avers. The other, uh, I was watched his live today from Wednesday, and uh, Jason's got talks about flax and being a bee, a bee food plant. Cindy, uh, your garlic, it should come back up when the when the temperatures get right. If it didn't rot in the ground. Citrus does not like wet feet either. And if you'll notice, citrus has not been in my videos very much because my citrus trees are, I don't know if it's, well, my wife gets cold and those plants are in her bathroom and she turns the heater like all the way up. And so my moringa, that little discoloration on my moringa leaves that I was seeing, I couldn't figure out, they were heat scorched. I went in one day and the heater was pushed all over into the plants. It was turned all the way up and on three. And when I opened the bathroom door, it felt like a sauna in there. 
And I was like, hey, you're killing my plants. Anyway. The citrus. I, I've got to define a better outdoor growing space. I really like Plant Abundance's outdoor growing space. I think what he's got going on is something that I could pull off a little bit here. Um, Terry King and I were talking about a double insulated polytunnel, but just the problem is the summers here. We're already outside temperatures of 100 to 110 in the summer. I don't know. Cindy, you grow in the desert uh, under what is, excuse me, what is your summers like? I'm going to grab a drink of water. Check this out. We can we can look. I, I ended up getting coffee instead of water, but we can look at my water flow on my ditches that I cut to see how my design is on my ditch work. So I'm I'm gonna have a really wet spot. It's good. It's catching water good. I knew I was going to have problems with this hill as it came down. I tried to give it an inlet into the, and it is, it's coming down through, dropping down to the next level, dropping, I don't know, coming that way. I've got some more work to do before this is right, but this is where the sunflowers were and I wanted to leave them as natural as possible. There's a lot of stems and the plant diversity that's there i don't really mind so much the plant there's not a lot of grass there which is the main thing for me does that make sense i can't see chat now Whew. let's see here <clears throat> Uh, JS Badger, I've got a couple of no dig beds here. I love my no dig beds, especially the first year you put them in. They're great. Um, the the natural bed back there is going to be a no dig bed, but it's it's um, it's layered. You know, I've got a year's worth of sticks collected and just over things I threw in there, and then I put a layer of of um, anaerobic compost on top and then i put a layer of chicken manure uh, my chicken clean out out of my chicken coop and then i put a, and that's uh pine shavings and chicken manure and then i put on top of that cardboard and then leaves a leaf mold hummus out of the woods we'll see uh the best beds i've got are my all natural beds the beds that I did not use any, my asparagus bed over there that I just pulled hummus out of the woods and put on the bed. And then I've been amending with bone meal and blood meal. That bed to this day is still my best bed. CMJ Farms in the house. Welcome, sir. Garden State Gardener in the house. Welcome, sir. Garden State Gardener, you just do not know how close I was to joining your pepper challenge. If I wasn't burned out on challenges from so much bull crap that I had to go through with the challenge I started, I just, I'm not interested in any entering anything like that anymore. It's just, it's more trouble than it's worth. And the only reason I did the single seed challenge this year is because my boys thought it would be fun to do hot pepper challenge. CMJ form. But your Peter Pepper challenge looks good. I just, I, I was, we were growing some other stuff. 
we're growing the um I don't even think I commented on your videos. You put out another challenge video. You were doing something else. You were challenging zucchini or something. I was over at Red Rock, Red Silo Homestead watching his stuff. And um, as I was watching that, I was like, man, this this guy and I have a lot in common. We, uh, we, we came together and, you know, I had to, after dad's dead, after dad died, I kind of moved on with life in some other directions and kind of left this guy I just met in the enemy camp. But anyway, I'm glad to be back with Red Silo Homestead and see what he's got going. He and his wife do great things up there to perform. And <clears throat> it's because of him I came in and met Garden State Gardener. And I think he's got a great channel as well. I watch a lot of those guys and just never say anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cucumbers. I think it was the cucumbers. Yeah. Oh. I'm still here. Y'all, it's people trying to call me. So, uh, Joe, I will be checking in periodically just to see what you guys are up to. Really like the idea. Just keep trucking on. That's right, baby. That's right. I, you know, I'm happy for Shed Wars. I, you know, it was always my dream with Shed Wars is to release it to the people and let everybody be in charge of shed wars and it not be so restrictive and oppressive. But, um, you know, and I handed it off to two people that I trusted with John and Robert and, uh, you know, they're going to do whatever they do to it. And rightly so it's theirs now. And I, I begged them to release it to the people, you know, but, um, John, it needs some organization. John's hard headed enough that he'll, He'll, he'll organize it and, you know, it's good luck to them. That's right, Tiffany. Humans need to be good to humans. That's right. And at the end of the day, do I think John's a bad person? No, I think John's a good person, and I love John. But, um, you know, John and I just are not good for each other. For whatever reason, we reached a point in our relationship where our relationship was more harmful to each other than helpful to each other. And it's just best probably if we don't talk very much. Um, doesn't mean I don't love the guy. I do love the guy. I still love him as much as the day that I found him. But anyway. All right. Well, it looks like I lost track of a conversation. Chris White says he's been watching, wanting to do, just wondering adjustments for clients. Uh, yeah, Chris White, you're on the right track with Charles Dowding. That's one of he's on my channel front page or whatever. When I first came on. He's one of the guys that I started watching, and I learned seedlings from Downing. That multi sowing technique, uh, compost. The guy's absolutely amazing, but it didn't take me very long to figure out. Um, I didn't have the time or resources to do things like Downing. So I gleaned from Downing what I could. And it's part of the reason it doesn't scare me to provide areas of inspiration. When I, when I tell you, hey, I was looking at this channel and this was really good. Go look at it. And you may stay there for six, eight, 10 months 
absorbing everything. And from there, you've got something else that you're interested in. And it may just, it may take you away from my channel forever. And that's fine. One day, though, you remember the woodcutter and you'll be like, I'm going to go back and see what he's up to. And um, it's about learning. And if I can send you someplace to where you can learn, like I do, I go other places and learn from all kinds of people. I think in the end, those of us that are concerned with what each other are doing will be back. It's not a big deal. Now, Red Silo Homestead, I like to talk some smack. I, I do like to talk some smack. But, um, yeah, it just, it got old. And for me, it was a one and done. I only, I only wanted to do Shed Wars for one year. John and Robert thought that they could take it some other places, and that's what they're doing. They talked me to coming back in 21, and I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't have time for this. I'm driving a truck. And then when dad died in 21, that was like, we're done. I'm done. I try to talk to somebody and they want to be belligerent and argumentative. And my dad had died or gone missing, I don't know, a week or so ago. And every time you try to talk to the dude, he wants to argue and fuss about everything. And you're just like, look, maybe you don't understand what's important here, but that ain't important. And it ain't going to be important right now. My dad being missing and my dad dying is important. So if you can't understand that, maybe we don't need to be friends. Anyway. I was in a bad place. And I know I said some things that were harsh and rude, deliberately. Because I was trying to get through to a thick-headed person. You need to understand that my dad's death right now is much more important than anything else going on. And, you know, people, people are people and you learn to forgive and you learn to love in spite of, and you move on with life and you wish the best for everybody involved. Simple ain't easy, simplistic forms. Hey, how you doing? Hmm. Yeah, Red Silo, I've got so many seeds. I was looking, and I was going to try to plant all of my seeds this year. And uh, it's not going to happen. But I am being very liberal. When I, did you see, if you saw my last video, I've got this, let me go get it. I got a package of sunflower, or wildflower and bee pollinator mix. So this is the B mix and this stuff was like $10, right? For this whole package. And when I opened the Monarch mix, it was like puking out of the package. It was so cool. But let's see if I can get a look at what's in this. So 
I see some echinacea. I see there's some dill. Um, I don't know what that is. A little black seed. It looks like a sesame seed almost. Anyway, let's see. You can see for yourself. This is that mix. And it's a mix of both perennial and annual color that support bees. I'm super excited about this. So I'm just going to dump it in here because I, I take my old seeds that like when you watch Charles Dowding do seeds, if he ever gets them in his hand, he never puts them back in his seed packs. He throws them out. And so I've got a bucket that I just I catch those extra seeds in. And then when I do this mix, I'll just put this mix in with whatever, whatever that is, and I'll throw it in these areas around the yard. I'm really excited for what this is going to be like this year. And this is the... Uh, this is the Monarch Butterfly Flower Mix. And you can see it's got Cosmos and Xenia and Echinacea as well. It's got that same little black seed. There's some sort of daisy. Anyway, this is the uh, Monarch Mix. It, it, I think it's got a little more annual in it than perennial. And uh, anyway, I just mix them together and sow them out on my sowing days. Like these, these I'll sow the 18th through the 22nd. I'll sow these in the areas I'm trying to establish this. I'll do it again on the 25th and 26th. I'll do it again on the 1st and 2nd and 6th and 7th. I, I'm just going to keep sowing and keep sowing and keep sowing so that this year the yard just burst with color uh, April showers bring May flowers I think there's some hollyhock and some biennial perennials in there as well here's some uh, cleansing spine yes milkweed is also in this Jason but I'd love to have some milkweed as well that's what, hey, Gypsy and the Vanilla Gorilla in the house. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Yeah, it's it's bad out here. Nasty, nasty. Let's see if I can pull him up. Where'd he go? Tiffany, nice. No. Most people I understand, you know, their insensitivity, but when you've got somebody that calls you a friend and tells you they're like a brother to you, uh, there's a different set of expectations for that friendship than there is on others. It's just the way I am. Don't tell me you're a brother and then I, I'll... Let's let that be the last of that. Ah, Jason says, so far I've shown, see milkweed, I would love to have milkweed just everywhere out here. I've tried to start it and it's one of those that you have to start to stratify. You have to set the seeds. And, and um, I was noticing Mr. Allen over at Don Course Plot I've got some people that I'm plugged into for inspiration this year. And one of those people is Mr. Allen over at the Don Course Plot. He's a UK gardener. So our zones don't match up at all. But the way the man starts seed, he's so particular. He's so clean with the seed starting. I mean, he doesn't touch his seeds. He does. I don't even know if he touches his soil, to be honest with you. But he, he just... He's got such a precise and neatness about the order of things, the way he does. I'm gleaning a lot from him right now. And so I, I'm 
he's somebody that I found back before the single seat challenge last year. And then as we moved away from, I, you know, it just, he's somebody that I appreciated early and I've returned to and I'm really enjoying it. Like potatoes. He, I find that the, the UK gardeners, the British gardeners do a really great job with potatoes and potato buckets. The thing that I, that I forget is they are the land of endless spring. They get a few hot days, but their hot days are not consistently hot and humid like ours is. They we have a much greater temperature variant from year to year, day to day, season to season than they do. They they tend to be more even, even in their extremes. Whereas, you know, we're teens and twenties in the winter. 105 in the summer, but yeah, Jason and I talked about this and he, he was very helpful in thinking about, you know, it's one thing to plant a garden for yourself, but there's bees that need to pollinate. And I figured out this week why insects are such a problem. I did. Does anybody know? Does anybody know why insects? How is she going to feed the birds? How much protein, how much building block foundational diet are insects for life on the planet? And it's pretty nice. Yeah, there you go. It's pretty nice if you were going to feed birds, chickens, wouldn't it be better to feed them insects for free than uh, having to buy a lot of food? So, got to have the insects as part of the system. They've got to stay alive too. I think as Jason, as we refine, as we define our permaculture areas, <laughs> we see the need for entirely wild spaces to exist. Yep, we've got to be balanced in our planning. Yeah. We're, we're so selfish. All we can think about is our food and our belly. I don't care if the birds eat. I just want to be able to eat a tomato. <laughs> I've seen it this year. They, they've done a lot of cutting around here. And 20 years ago, when we moved into this place, there was lots of big woods for miles and miles and miles. And we really didn't struggle. We really didn't struggle with, with like, people it was like there were fox and deer and we had quail and it was it, this place was gorgeous in the last 20 years and recently within the last five there's been a lot of stuff cut down around here and i've noticed the increase in bird population this year in squirrel population this year it's like everything is being concentrated into these still wild areas and it made it really made me understand the importance of uh, just leaving wild spaces for wild things to exist. Part of the I think the problem with the carbon the carbon issue for the planet is we've deforested so much, and we've not allowed the deforestation to return. And I realize that sounds like a tree hugger, but there's no denying that the forest that existed before the 1800s before in Arkansas the white oaks were cut down were larger the the fungal networks were larger the plant diversity was larger you can only go back and read the examples of history of what native species were in existence in those early studies and then go back and look at the plant diversity and the replants by the tree companies and see that we're doing huge damage to the ecosystem and uh I think that we've altered the carbon balance enough now. We've cut enough forest down and, and carbon reserve reservoirs, these water and carbon reservoirs, we've cut enough of them down that we're starting to see impact and that most of the scientists just um, either are paid not to tell that that's the problem or they just they don't think in those terms that it can't be that we're cutting stuff down. we got to have progress, right? But the truth is, we need to halt. 
progress and we need to expand nature right now. Yeah. Jeff says, um, what we need to do is quit trying to do anything with it and just let it be the wildlife areas. Yeah. I mean, it was here a long time before us. Can you imagine Roman, those plains of the uh, upper, the central west, South Dakota, North Dakota, Illinois, the, the, the herd of buffalo that would have been wandering those places would have been truly an amazing thing to see. And uh, Tiffany says that's exactly why I started planning for the deer. Large piece of property was sold, and there was almost a dozen deer grazing out there that I know of. Yeah. Yeah, tearing out old growth hardwoods and replacing with uh, fast growth pine. There's a there's a YouTube documentary on a guy named Victor Schossenberger. And he was a German naturalist during World War II and got pulled into the war effort. But he he was a forester. He was a, a forestry um, guy by trade. But he began to study water culture. And if you have not watched Victor Schlossenberger's thing on YouTube, spend some, to do yourself a favor and spend some time seeing what he figured out about water. It, it's it's fascinating. Um, and when when I tell in about the same time Nikola Tesla was studying energies around the planet and stuff, and uh, I think. For me, what I've started doing because of their work, I've started adding just copper coils. I'll just build myself like I, I was an electrician by trade for a long time. So I've got a lot of extra wire laying around. And I just take, you know, a six, eight, ten inch piece of wire and I'll bend it into the shape of a triangle with a stem and I'll put it in the ground. Why? You're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Because there's free electrical, there's free energy, free electrons floating around. And if I can catch those ionic particles in the atmosphere and transfer that energy into the ground, then I excite whatever soil chemistry is going on there is my thinking. Even on a minute level, even if it's a one millionth of a volt difference, it's still energy input into a system. And so... I'm trying to just grab free energy for the gardens. I do that in my water buckets as well. I uh, And I've noticed a huge difference in my watering. I just take a copper coil and I'll drop it over into my water. And uh, that's it, Jason. Yep. Um. Kyle, I think it's, um, I don't know if it's the shapes necessarily, but I know that the triangle is a, is a strong shape. It's the strongest shape known to man, but I don't know if it's the best frequency antenna. Um, but, yeah. So if you haven't watched that, that's a good one. Um, there's another scientist that did, a study on memory of water and water crystals. They would uh, they would subject water to um, different inputs. Like I love you, water, and they would freeze it, and it would have one kind of crystal. And they would look at have a different glass of water, and they would say, "I hate you." You know, they would feed it full of negative energy, and um, they would freeze those crystals. And the difference in the crystal design. Um, they played music like Mozart. They played music like death metal. They played music, all kinds of things on the, um, oh, see, weirdies unite. Those of us that, that have these weirdy thoughts. I just, I, I'm going to really sound crazy now, but I think about the ancients. And um, you see some of the work that went on in France with aligning quartz stones a certain way to capture energy. It's just, I don't know. Here, here's my thinking on it. 
it stimulates the wind, the uh, soil chemistry, temperature gradients. It, it just, I think if enough of that is done on a small level that we get a balance or we get a, a we just, we, we pick up energy and supply it to the system. That's all I know to say. There's a good, some good thoughts going on here. So that's one of the things that I have not told anybody on. You are the first ones, and probably I will not mention that outside of this live at all because it's it's so out there, um, but it's something I'm practicing. Wow. Ground batteries. Yeah, Jason last year did a great thing on a building an earth battery. And I, I wondered that. I wondered, you know, if I use one side of the yard, if I put zinc electrodes and the other side, I use copper. For now, I'm just going to, I'm going to put a few copper electrodes around because that's what I've got. Just trying to, copper is a positive ion and um, it, it, it will take on those negatively charged ions in the atmosphere. Jason says the project that he was working on this morning. Um, was calculating fuel consumption equations and accounting for the products with photosynthesis. So far, everyone winds up with a net loss of oxygen. Uh, are you locking oxygen into un, uh, unusable or unbreakable compounds? Solar fence. Oh, there's some good stuff going on. Great thoughts. One of these days I'm going to have to do, I, I need to be on this right away with the current state of things. I've got a well, but I don't have access to the water in the well because it's an electric pump and the well head's busted. But when we first got here, the well pumped water. I'm hoping to tie, cut that loose and, and get myself a manual pump so I can pump water manually. I, w I should have already done that, but in order to do that, the plan is to tear down the existing well house and then bring the pump up six or eight, ten feet so I can pump into a reservoir that I could use to water gardens or whatever out of using IBC totes. And that well is kind of the foundation of any expansion or thing we do on the house which which means we probably won't ever do anything on the house <laughs> uh, scrappy acres i don't know how deep it is but we'll throw some ideas out there to generate some inspiration so that whatever you're working on you might be inspired to finish and not be like us out here these wacko crazies <laughs> I'm going to grab some more coffee. I'll be right back. Good to see you, Scrappy. You know, I, I like outside-the-box thinking, and I like people that think outside the box. Mm. So... I think some of the best, you know, there's there's time to be rigid and inside the box for things. No worries. But there's also a time to look outside the box and seek a different solution. If you continue doing the same thing, looking for a different solution, that's the uh, recipe for insanity. Yeah, red silo. Supposedly, the water we have here is sweet as well. When I moved out here, um, the old junk man came out, and the junk man and I became friends, and he had a well. He'd lived out here since the 60s or 70s, and he said, you know the good thing about our property out there? I said, what's that, Bill? 
He said, we got good, sweet water. I said, oh, good. <laughs> oh, Chris. <laughs> oh, Amy. Amy says she thinks in a bag. <laughs> Is that a Walmart sack? <laughs> oh, shoot. In the end result, we desperately need to get out of burning fuel with atmospheric oxygen. If we were just releasing CO2, we would be helping the planet, but that isn't what's going on. Yeah. Jason, I'm going to defer to your expertise. It's uh, not something I know much about. Other than I know the chemistry of it. I taught the chemistry of it for years. Oh. I think after a while, the, the planet reaches a balancing point where it doesn't, you know, it's not one way or the other. It's just balanced. Right, Red Silo, running on solar. That's what I'm thinking, too. Um, I want a manual pump head. Um. If I if we were in an emergency situation right now, I could put a chain, you know, a couple of pieces of jack chain on a piece of PVC pipe. I could put a cap on a piece of pipe, a six or eight inch, six or eight foot piece of pipe, and I could drop that pipe down that well with that chain and draw my water that way. I could do that at today if I needed to. But I'm looking for a way to pump water and use well water for my gardens but after watching terry king i love 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 what terry king does with his water he catches every bit of water for his entire gardening allotment off of his roofs and just open air catch so <clears throat> that's something this i want to since the well will be the center of life for this garden Sun's free, dirt's already there. Can't change that. But I can change the amount of water it receives by having the well. I want to put a reserve up off the ground so that I can gravity feed either other reserve storage vessels. And that's what Terry does. Terry has a main system that gravity siphons to other parts of the system. And then he can fill buckets from those or he can use a hose from those. And so I'm thinking of zoning, my water zoning catchments. Where are the main places I'm going to catch water from? And then what is, what can I gravity siphon from that point either to use on the beds or to feed another reserve where I can gravity siphon down into using water? And there's a lot of infrastructure that has to be built, reserve tanks and stuff. So it's, it's just one of those things that's going through my mind, going through my mind is I'm, as I'm opening up areas and I see problems, well, that might be a good place to bury a reserve. That might be a bit good place to bury, you know, 150 gallon IBC tote so I can put water there. You know, it's just those kind of things are always going through my mind. Yeah, this this blows me away, Edmund Dante. This blows me away. Water harvesting is illegal in some places in America. That's true. In some places out west, Colorado, Wyoming, someplace, when you buy property, you don't even get the water or the mineral rights. You just get the surface. Everything underneath is somebody else's that's held on to the rights. That's crazy to me. Uh, no, Scrappy. Yeah. I, I did have an asphalt roof and I replaced the lower section of my asphalt roof and, um, I didn't do a good enough job and we still had some leaks and rather than spend another three to 4,000 or replacing the roof and doing it, you know, I just called a guy, I said, Hey, bring that metal, put a metal roof on it. And, uh, 
<laughs> Jason says he'll water his he'll harvest his water any way he sees fit. <laughs> uh, and Scrappy says areas that water reservation is not allowed. You run irrigation trenches between your rows and dump the water in those. Absolutely, yeah. That's part of the reason I dug my garden the way I did this year. I tried to take into mind the uh, water capture that I needed and uh, to set up some berms, moving this outdoor bed, moving this yard bed into a potential no-till situation where I'm just opening it up and dropping stuff in eventually. But it's not going to happen overnight here. It's... Uh, I've lived here 20 years and it's like I hadn't done anything to be honest. I mean, I've got a couple of nice foundation. I've got a blueberry tree. I've got a pear tree. I've been through countless peaches for whatever reason. The soil here just is loves mildew and fungus. And, uh, I don't know what to do to keep peaches from mummy rotten. I'll have the most beautiful peaches and, uh, then they mummy rot. They all brown rotten. They're gone. Scrappy, <laughs> I get it. I get it. I stripped off five squares down to the wood and made sure all the tacks were up and made sure all the, the loose boards were nailed down. There wasn't any floaters or anything. And I went through and put down new deck boards, three quarter inch. Oh, it, it, it. But where my roof, came together right there's a little pitch i tied back to where it went up and i came up just enough to where the top overlapped the bottom but i was having some trouble and uh, with around this one pipe getting the tie-in good and i didn't want to go back anymore because i had gone past the flat you know i tried to i tried to sneak it in there and i created a problem and so the solution then was to finish going up that side of the roof and spending about another three to four. And I just, after this old man scraped the roof and re-roofed and then was going to have to scrape a, and I, I like call somebody and I'm done. <laughs> Jason says, uh, Jason says, you can always put the downspouts from your roof into buried cisterns and that keeps the harvest out of sight. Yeah. Red Silo talking about water harvesting says our well about 20 feet lower than house and gardens down a hill, but hoping to run water all over the property for future livestock gardens and houses. Mm -hmm. Scrappy says, I watched it. I saw what you was doing. The flashing was not tucked enough. So I, I could have helped you out, man. It would have been my pleasure. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. At that point, I, I was hoping to to get the roof done and get back in the truck, and then life happened. So, or had I already decided then to not get back in the truck? I can't remember. I know this. I had been out of the truck since first of October, first of November. I can't remember which. But coming out of the truck, I was 275 pounds. I was starting to have a pinch in my lower back. And uh, I worked my butt off in my early 40s to put some muscle on myself. So going into my old age, I wouldn't be crippled. I would have the muscle mass to be able to continue to move. And so I did that. I worked that. And in a year and a half, that truck nearly broke me. Uh, back trouble all the time and i finally since i've been out of that truck i went from 275 i was on scale the other morning i was 238 so i've lost 35 at least 30 pounds i've lost at least 30 pounds and uh i could touch my toes um yesterday after digging for two days straight i was feeling a little back issue but what i've noticed is when my back starts feeling that way if i'll stretch my hamstrings out I'll stretch out those quads and hamstrings and calves. 
that the back loosens up. A lot of my back trouble comes from my hamstrings. See you, Tiffany Q. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day. I appreciate your input. Great information. Mm. I would, Chris, I wasn't getting enough time out of the truck. I wasn't, I wasn't taking care of myself when I got out somewhere. And, um, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be good for me. So I decided it was time to do something different. And I, I feel good, man. I caught myself the other day doing some aerobic work when I was hitting that shovel. <laughs> there was a couple of times where I'd had to stop and I'd be like, <sighs> and then I'd be good. <sighs> So, you know, don't be afraid to get out there and work and get healthy. It, it happens. <laughs> yeah. Scrappy says this. He says, most places require the water tanks to be sealed. So buried, allowed to be big, a thousand gallon square drums, those are okay, but not open buckets or barrels of water where insects breed too many diseases. Right on. Absolutely. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. That's part of the reason I, had, I almost took that IBC tote that's behind the shed over there and brought it up and put it under a downspout on my highest point where my downspout collects water. And then I'd have some garden water. But what happens when that thing gets full and it's splashing water all over the siding of your house? And I, I just, I hadn't got it figured out how I'm going to do it yet to where it's not going to be an issue. So. Mm hmm. For sure, diseases. Mm. Good grief. We've been on for two hours. Uh, Y'all want me to leave it running or you want to go do something else? I mean, it's up to you guys. I'm going to, I'm going to go have a cigarette and I'll be back. If you're still here, when I get back, you're still here. All right. We lost four. That's not bad. Cindy, have a great day. Thanks for stopping by. See, Jason, that's what I'm thinking, too. Is part of it's going to need to be underground. I'm not sure I understand all that, Jason. We may have to talk later. Our treasured home, Nancy. 
Dude, how are you doing? So good to see you. Are you growing garden this year? Nancy, our treasured home, just a beautiful, inspirational person, if you don't know Nancy. Scrappy says, my basil. My basil's not up yet. Are you running it on uh, heat? Ooh, see, this is this is the layering. How open does that top canopy need to be in order? I don't know. Jason, you know I've got some Mark Shepard chestnuts, and I was watching what's his name? Oh, South Carolina guy, early bird, South Carolina gardens. It's a green icon with a white bird on it. And he's from South Carolina. I can't remember the guy's name right now, but he was planting chestnuts recently and using these tree savers. And, uh, I just, I thought it was, interesting what he was doing there's basically a, an opaque tube that you put down over the seedling that protects it from deer and wind and excessive sunlight and it lets the tree grow up through this tube and then the canopy will pop out the top and it um he's got a piece of pvc sitting beside it's a really good video about tree planting for deer protection and that sort of stuff um i thought about doing that with my chestnuts but I don't know. I didn't realize they were going to be such a deer attractive. Uh, deer love to eat them, evidently. Also, there's, so I've got, is it 25 or 50 a minimum order? I can't remember. It's a lot. I got chestnuts and hazelnuts covered. And I think that I got the hybrid varieties. At the end of that, I started to buy the American chestnut, but because of the issues here that we have with fungus and rot already i decided it may be better for me to get the hybridized tree i think i bought the minimum order of hybridized chestnut trees and also hazelnuts and i'm going to use the hazelnuts as kind of like screens for wind or back backdrops i'm going to grow them like a hedge and keep them trimmed up tight and low six or eight feet at the tallest and try to get them more like a shrubbery or a bush than let them grow into trees and use them as like windbreaks and screens inside the down pasture area plant them about every i don't know i want to keep them tight like i want to say five feet apart i'll just have to look on the plantings yeah and so the chestnuts I'm going to plant like four or five. And when I plant those, the thinking is that those are going to be the true foundations of those will be the heritage trees on this property. If they survive that and the pecans, I'm still looking for some more pecans, but as uh, far as I could tell, the pecan you sent me is still alive. The ones Brent and Cindy Swafford Homestead sent me, I haven't seen them. I didn't identify them well enough and I don't know what they did. So we'll look at the, I'll, I'll just have to wait until the seedlings get big enough to be able to tell if they made it or not. The, so you sent me three. The one I planted up by the chicken house, there's other two others that are sort of gorilla gardened in somewhere else, and we'll see how those did. Mm. Yeah. And then I've got a place to stick some chestnuts. I'm going to put some here. and I'm going to spread them out through these woods around here. <laughs> so if you see me on your property, I may be planting trees. Hmm. hmm. What else? I've got those true persimmons, and those are the non-astringent variety of persimmon. I'm excited about those. I love persimmons. Yep. 
And you know what, Scrappy, when we're talking about heritage trees, I've got that creek in the back. I really need to be finding myself some cypress and planting on that creek back there. I need to be planting some cypress if it will grow because they'll get huge. Yeah, I know, Edmund, dropping all that food on the ground. Why would anybody want a pecan? And then uh, Christ Family Homestead says, I want to add some pears to my yard this year. We got an old Bartlett pear here that does really well for us. And uh, in spite of all, it's, it's, it, the pears look awful, awful, but they make, and they make excellent preserves. It's not really, I eat the pears fresh, but they're real dry, real crunchy, and I love that they're like the opposite of a pear. They're like a good crisp apple, but they have the flavor of a pear. Um, but they're great for preserves and canning pears. I thought about adding a different pear to our <clears throat> lineup, but I didn't. That's right. Marky chestnut seed, just like Johnny Appleseed. I hear you. Hmm. Did you know I'm related to Johnny Appleseed? <laughs> I really am. Oh, yeah. The barrel KG, the roll around, the, the ground roller that's got like, it looks like a slinky sort of, or it looks like a bingo ball selector and you roll it over and it picks them up. Granddaddy used to have one that was like, it looked more like a slinky and was open and had a handle in the middle and you go through and just jab and pick up pecans. Watermelon rind preserves. Mm, who made, no, Boone was making corn cob preserves. Mm. Oh, wow, you push it around like a vacuum, Scrappy says. Look at there. Yeah, those things are irreplaceable. This year, let me show you some pear preserves. Are you checking the stuff you put in your pantry? We went through our pantry the other day just to check jars and see if things needed to be thrown out or whatever. But this is some pear preserves that I put up in 2020. And that's how Granddaddy liked them, right? He liked them dark and thick. Same batch. I just pulled this one earlier than I pulled that one. This is how Grandmama liked hers. See that syrup's real light? Ooh, I can't wait to open this jar. But um, when you put your preserves up, you know, there's still some variance in there. Of flavor, texture, taste. Growing up, I like granddaddy style. But I think now I like grandmama style a little bit. Learn to make your watermelon run. You can do it. Oh, Nancy, what did they, what, what came up? I'm curious. JS Badger on some homemade buttermilk biscuits. Sunday, they, ooh, larping good. <laughs> That's good. They're real good. Mm. 
Yeah, this is a good point. How old is that forest then? Hmm. That sounds good. Pecan pear jam. Sounds delicious. Really, really good. Y'all gonna make me eat something. Instead, I'm gonna go put my seeds up. Broke Farmer, what's going on? How you doing, man? It's good to see you, my friend. You look a little down in the dumps. What happened? You went on that skyrocket ride to the top of YouTube and it got kind of flat. Keep going, buddy. You, you an all-star for sure. I love that 1970s editing that you do in your stuff. It just, love it, man. Love it. Hope your MIG grow off is going well. We just, it's raining. So earlier we were talking about gardening planning. And uh, we see these are the planning dates. 25th, 26th for roots. You got another root day on the 18th through the 22nd. Then uh, above ground crops, 1st and 2nd, 6th and 7th, 11th and 12th before we hit our our frost date on the 23rd. Oh, Nancy's saying that her genetics, my son showed that we are German, Switzerland, Norway, Viking are the main ones. Not a lick of Hungarian and Slovakian. So I'm definitely adopted. All right. And French. Very interesting. Right on. And Jason's saying that the Amazon rainforest is at a minimum 7,000 years old. Broke, it's raining. It's raining so hard, I can't do anything outside today. So rather than go stir crazy by myself, I invited some of my crazy friends to join along. And we have just been chatting and hanging out. Brett Chandler, why? You, you should be in school, man. What are you doing, Brett? <laughs> Bull's garden in the house. What's up, Bull? Mm, Bull, you're lucky you live over there. I live over here is all I can say. <laughs> oh. Bull, I probably have told you this, but when I was growing up, we used to watch HBO Fight Night, Friday Night Fight Night. <laughs> And there used to be this boxer to come on there, and I used to love to watch him throw hands. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. To me, that dude was just the epitome of class and character in boxing, in the world of boxing. So he's somebody that I grew up just loving to watch him box. I thought he was the greatest ever. And to hear that, you know, I just instantly, you my guy. So... But if you want to see a patient gardener that knows what he's doing, that won't raise his voice to get you to listen, but the words that come out of his mouth are pure gold, that's my friend, the Bull's Garden. It, when he moved to that place, we started watching him lay in the foundations of that food forest. And he was like, you're just lucky woodcutter. This is the first year I'm putting this stuff down. And uh, I've watched it grow over the last two years. And uh, he's he's flat out growing some stuff. And it's getting better and better and better every year. You know, the old Shed Wars concept came from Bull. The Bull wanted 
to see the world grow more food and be sustainable. And uh, we took that idea and ran with it and turned it into whatever. Snow flurries here. Yeah, it's fixing to be cold. 27 overnight tonight. Not putting anything in the garden in the dirt until after the 23rd. We got some nasty, nasty cold weather coming. Yeah, the wind here was pretty crazy. Anytime I get a south wind that's cold, a wind that comes up out of the south that's cold, I know we got some nasty coming, some nasty weather. That's a polar vortex. Yeah, the bull has developed a beautiful oasis, that's for sure. Bull, what are you doing today? What's going on in your place? What are you getting ready to do? What's up coming? He's spraying fruit trees. I know the bull spraying those fruit trees. I had forgotten all about fruit trees until the bull put that video up. And I didn't know what I was just like, okay, bull said, do this, do this, do this. And so I just do, 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 following bull. I didn't follow you on the tangleweed. Tangle, tangleweed? Tangle root? Tangle? I had never heard of it before, but I didn't follow you on that because I don't have any of that. Hmm. But I did move my persimmon trees out to the areas that I'm getting ready to plant them in. I think I'm going to plant one of them up in my main garden. I'm just going to stick it. Here you go. Who was I listening to the other day? They were talking about sun scorch on fruit trees. That uh, It may have been in this chat just a little while ago. Tanglefoot is what it is. Thank you. Um, that's fruit trees, their leaves scorch really easy. Ooh. Wind's been nonstop for three days. That's that's the reason I couldn't live in Oklahoma. I'm out of coffee. I need some coffee. All right. See you, Scrappy Acres. Like a herd of turtles. Yeah, I, I, I need to be done, don't I? Just everybody's going to come in throughout the day. It, it can never end. That sound funny to me. Ooh. All right, let's do five more minutes. Anything we can talk about in five? I'm going to eat a couple of oranges. The oranges right now are ripe. And if you hadn't been to the grocery store and gotten some fresh oranges, you might ought to. I ate four last night. They were so good. They just they taste like sunshine. Mmm, mmm, mmm. They're still good today. Snow day for Jason. I'm not doing any outside work today. It's too wet. Oh, I don't. I don't like the never-ending lives. <laughs> ah! This is the reason I don't do lives much. I'd rather go and hang out at your live, and when I get bored with it, I can just leave. <laughs> if I'm the one doing the live, I can never leave. I'm stuck here. <laughs> mm. J.S. Badger, see you, buddy. You be blessed. Come here. Mm. We need some calories. I'm losing losing weight right and left I'm trying to eat enough to quit losing weight today is a much needed day off the last two days of digging soil I'm getting too old for that I'm not too old for it but I'm getting too old for it my neighbor he's having some health issues he can't do much anymore, but he was out on the porch yesterday watching me shovel. Must be nice to be able to sit and watch. Good morning, Miss Oregon. Miss Patty, good to see you, lady. Mm. 
We got to go. What? You and Bull are friends? See, that's, I don't like that. That's good. Bull's got some great cutting. What are y'all cutting on? Bro, what are y'all doing over there? Mmm. Mmm. I'm telling you, the oranges are ripe. Go get you some oranges. Oh, they're good. Oh, they're good. So which is it, broker? Are you going or have you gone? Jason says he's he could do some double digging in the newly opened area where the sycamore was, but he's got volunteers if he don't get those out quick. And he has some deliberate well thought out trees that he wants to grow there. <laughs> uh, broke farmer, you don't know the bull. The bull ain't friends with just anybody. Bull, he he kind of selective who he's friends with. Mm. This orange is delicious. I put a bite in my mouth last night mm. and it was like, <clears throat> it was like a 72 degree night on the Caribbean listening to some live music while the breeze is blowing in off the ocean by beach side. You know, it's like, mm, that's good. Mm, mm, mm. It's good. Mm. Mm. I may have to get off here. Did you see the juice strip? I got on my shirt. Mm. Mm. Five minutes is up. Um, Nancy, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. And, um, yeah. You'll have to ask them. Yeah, when you bite into that good juicy orange and the juice shoots across the room, I got to have one more. I just ate two oranges. I got to have one more. Yeah, Nancy, that's... Everybody's got to make a choice about what they want to do with their time. Do something productive that doesn't create a stumbling block for others in the way. You know? Be kind, compassionate, self-disciplined, peaceful. Get such things there is no law. You know what I'm saying. If that life was easy, we wouldn't still be talking about it some 2,000 years later about who's doing it right and who's not doing it right. <laughs> that obviously is something none of us have figured out, and we're all striving to figure it out together. And that's okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. See, I think this is one orange too many. I'd have been good with two. Nah, three is good. I told my wife, I said, these oranges are so good. Buy us two more bags because they're not going to be good like this for long. So she's going to bring some more oranges home so we can just eat good, fresh oranges. All right, buddy. 
Broke Farmer, thanks for stopping by, my friend. Back to class. He's uh, Broke Farmer is uh, taking a master gardening class to improve his gardening ability. He's uh, he's dead serious about this, and I'm, I'm excited to see what happens because of it. I will say I was proud of him, but who am I to be proud of that man? That man's doing his own thing. He don't need my blessing to be blessed. Hmm. Mm. I'm sorry. Yep. Hey, y'all. Let's get back together some other time. I thank each and every one of you for being here. I love you all. Those of you that didn't say anything, I love you too. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for coming by and hanging out with me in the rain.